Jesse and I are here today to tell you about new products that you can use to build even more immersive apps for VR. I am Neha Chatra, an engineering manager at Meta, bringing new interactive VR experiences to life. Specifically, we'll talk about the inputs and interactions of our presence platform. Over the next 30 minutes, I will first recap all the products we've launched so far this year. Then I will hopefully leave you excited with all the products we're launching in the coming months. After that, my colleague Jesse will dive deeper into Interaction SDK, which is our library for you to bring natural inputs to your app users. Let's recap the launches this year. We heard your feedback and wanted to make hands more responsive, so interactions would feel more natural to users. And we did exactly that. With Meta, Quest, V56, and beyond, we've drastically reduced the gap between hands and controllers. As you can see in the video here, the right hand, which is running Hands 2.2, is moving much more quickly and seamlessly with the controller. In fact, this improved responsiveness is a result of a whopping 40 to 75% latency reduction we've made in hand tracking. Another capability we've added to hands is the fast motion mode, which you can use to make your fast paced apps even more responsive. Let's see it in action with the Move Fast app. that for you, our developers, hands and controllers complement each other. And so this year, we also launched multimodal input. So you can build experiences with seamless transitions between controllers and hands, and more immersion, even when just using a single controller. Multimodal input is now available as an experimental feature with Meta Quest Pro controllers. Let's see it in action with the Maestro app. We know that people interact with the world in VR with more than just hands, for example, with keyboards. Previously, if you wanted your app to have a keyboard, you had to implement it yourself. This led to a wide variety of keyboards across apps, as you can see from examples on the screen, and each with its own unique user experience. But no longer. In June of this year, we brought you our virtual keyboard, available for Unity and native developers. With Virtual Keyboard, you can bring keyboards to your apps within a few minutes using a Unity prefab. It's immersive, it's fast, and it's customizable to fit your app aesthetic. And most importantly, it provides a much better user experience with features like swipes, type ahead, and dictation. Beyond hands and objects, you have shown us that voice can do so many things with the Meta Voice SDK. Let's take a peek. With Meta's Voice SDK, voice can do more than be heard. It can be felt. Voice can command fleets. Flagship, protect blue one. Acknowledged. Show red two. Acknowledged. Flagship, move here. Acknowledged. Flagship, target red two. All ships, fire everything on red two. And make heroes of us all. Voice can get you closer to the answer. The letter R, there is one R. I'd like to solve Run Like the Wind. You solved it. Congratulations. Voice can help us learn something new. Nanigaski desu ka? And bring color to our world. Usagi. Voice can speak things into existence. Spawn Red Cube. I heard Spawn Red Cube. Spawn Green Triangle. I heard Spawn green triangle. Or remove them altogether. Detach hands. I heard detach hands. Whoa. 
voice can even make the living dead. EMP! Wish they weren't so living. Let's bet 100. Voice can bring riches. I'll stay. You win. Or it can bring heartache. Hit me again. Busted. No! Voice can bring knights to their knees. Queen to knight g4. D5 to bishop e6. Rook a1 to rook a8. And topple kings. Queen to c6. Checkmate. This is only the beginning. Imagine what you can do with voice. To briefly recap the recap, this year we've empowered you with more responsive hands, easy to use keyboards, and the ability to use voice to create immersive apps. And we've been nothing but impressed with your creativity and vision in leveraging these for your apps. Looking forward, I'll show you all the products that you can get your hands on over the coming months. Last year, we had rolled out the Meta Voice SDK text-to-speech product with two initial voices. You asked for more, and we've expanded to 15 natural-sounding voices. And to give you even more flexibility, we're also adding 15 new game-ready voices. Let's hear a nanny. In a world where technology meets whimsy, we ensure every voice is practically perfect in every way. Oh, and ahoy, pirate. Avast, ye scallywags of Connect! Shiver me timbers! Get ready for some fun new TTS! But you might ask, Neha, what if I need a voice that you don't provide yet? Well, thank you for asking. To help you achieve your vision, I'm excited to introduce voice cloning. With just 20 minutes of voice recording, you can craft a brand new custom text-to-speech voice. Now let's hear what Scully from Alden's Waltz of the Wizard has to say. Greetings, friends. Hope you're enjoying MetaConnect. A very special thanks to the Voice SDK for this magical new system. Drop by my tower when you get a chance, and we'll go on an adventure together. See ya. You can swing by Scully's tower, or preferably, if you're a part of the First Access program, reach out to your meta rep to learn more about how you can give voice cloning a try. To build immersive interactive experiences, it's important to have advanced hardware. With Meta Quest 3, we're launching the brand new Touch Plus controllers with powerful TrueTouch haptics and a beautiful, sleek design that's focused on comfort. These controllers will enable more immersive experiences with a range of vibrations, as well as ergonomic, ring-free design that enables much more natural motions. As you can see, we've dropped the ring on these, and that's because under the hood, we use improved AI-powered tracking with even better performance than before. As I just mentioned, the new Meta Quest 3 controllers come with TrueTouch haptics that enable high-fidelity haptic experiences with their new wideband motors. To help you take advantage of this new creative cap capability, we provide state-of-the-art tools, Meta Haptics Studio and Meta Haptics SDK. Using these tools, you can quickly and easily design, audition, and integrate haptics on these controllers. And to make these experiences even more developer-friendly, we ensure that all haptics designed for Quest 3 will be backwards compatible across Meta Quest devices. With V57, we're also bringing direct touch to all interactions in the home environment. As you can see in the video here, Direct Touch provides much more immersiveness and is much better ex user experience for 2D interactions. We want you to be able to adopt these easily, so we went an extra mile and have made Direct Touch primitives available in Interaction SDK as out-of-the-box features. As Jesse will show you later in this talk, these primitives include heuristics like touch limiting that make 2D interactions precise. If you're like me, when you work out in VR, you want to have big movements with your body. 
So in the coming months, we're bringing you a new mode for hands called the wide motion mode. Powered by the advancements in inside-out body tracking, we are now able to track hands even when outside the field of view of the headset. With this new capability, you can bring app experiences with movements such as overthrows or grabbing something from a backpack. Let's watch it in action with the Maestro app. If you want to learn more about inside-out body tracking, check out the talks from the Get Moving session at Connect. Speaking of enabling more movement with hands, soon we're also enabling comfortable hand interactions like thumb swipes and taps that are small, low-calorie movements. As you can see from examples on the screen, these gestures are ideally suited to build experiences that require repetitive gestures, such as scrolling a feed. In fact, with micro gestures, we're also enabling locomotion in immersive 3D environments, as you can see from this example of a person moving seamlessly in a 3D museum. To recap, we've got a slew of products we're excited to bring to you, and we look forward to all the ways you bring these to life with your apps, and we're keen to hear any feedback you have as well. At this point, We'll pivot a bit, and I'll hand off to my colleague, Jesse, to tell us about Interaction SDK. Thank you. Hello. My name is Jesse Keogh, and I'm the tech lead manager for the Interaction SDK team. Let's spend the next few minutes talking about the Interaction SDK and why it might be a great fit for your next project. If you're not familiar, Interaction SDK, or ISDK for short, is a production library that makes it easy to add controller and hand-based interactions to your MR or VR experience. Adopting ISDK into your project can save you time by providing you high-quality interactions out of the box that are consistent with the Quest system and built around design best practices. Unity developers can take advantage of all that ISDK has to offer today by importing the Oculus Integration SDK into your project. While we often focus on hand tracking when talking about ISDK, we also have full support for controller inputs as well as hybrid options that blend hands and controllers into one input source. You can see in the controller hands demo here that we're posing a synthetic hand using controller inputs. This allows for you to build your interaction system once without worrying about which input mode your user might have enabled. We're working on advanced input modes that allow developers to combine the powers of controllers and hands. With CapSense-driven hands, you're given natural hand poses that conform to Meta's controller models. And with simultaneous hands and controllers, not only can you seamlessly transition between the two, but you can support both at the same time, one hand and one controller, or even a tracked hand using a tracked controller. Both of these features are in development, and you can expect to see them in future releases of ISDK. Using ISDK, you can quickly and easily add a range of interactions to your experience, from raise, pokes, and grabs, to locomotion, custom poses, and gestures. Let's take a look at a few of these in action. For Canvas UI interaction, we of course support the same Raycast interaction model that you might be familiar with from controller-based experiences, but we found that allowing your users to interact with interfaces and objects directly is a much more rewarding experience. A great example of this is the Quest system environment, which has supported Raycast and pinch selection for a while now, but direct touch is quickly becoming the standard. ISDK offers direct touch support out of the box, and it's easy to wire up new or existing Canvas UI for poke interaction. You can add touch limiting, which gives the user visual haptic feedback when they touch a surface, or check out the new palm menu prefab in our poke example scene that uses the offhand as a physical backstop for poke interactions. For object interaction, we offer a variety of grab and transform types. 
Touch Grab allows you to pick up complex 3D objects according to their collider geometry, resulting in natural hand poses when the grab is triggered. Hand Grab allows you to specify different hand poses for different grab handles of the object ahead of time, and will snap the synthetic hand to that pose accordingly. And then, of course, you can trigger actions on objects that have been grabbed with additional poses, as seen here with our spray bottle. And you can use one or two hands to manipulate objects in 3D space. Additionally, ISDK has support for teleport locomotion with snap turning, as well as the ability for you to create custom poses and gestures to power your experience. You can try out all of these interactions and more for yourself in our ISDK Samples app, which is available within the ISDK package and also as a standalone build in the App Lab, as well as the latest version of First Hand, which includes a full gameplay module focused around our locomotion solution. First Hand is also available on App Lab, and the first two levels are fully open sourced on GitHub. We want you to be able to get a new MR experience spun up as quickly as possible with the confidence that the user experience is going to be smooth and intuitive. We recognize that it can be difficult to configure your scene to support multiple interactions and to resolve the conflicts that may arise between them. We have a few announcements today focused around decreasing developer friction and making ISDK easier to use. Today, we're announcing that we will be releasing a new comprehensive Unity sample as part of the Unity ISDK package. This sample demonstrates all of the core interactions that the Quest system depends on in one place, wired up to design best practices and ready to be used in your experience. You can see a prototype of this sample here. Keep an eye out for this sample in an upcoming ISDK release. We're also announcing building block support for Interaction SDK. Building blocks are pre-configured prefabs for some of Presence Platform's most common use cases. Our first set of five building blocks for ISDK is listed here, and these will go live in version 57. One more thing. We've received a ton of great feedback since we first released our first-hand sample app. A new and improved version of first-hand will be launching with the Quest 3, including two new playable levels focused around interactions built with ISDK that support mixed reality and haptics. We're excited for you to be able to try the latest and greatest interaction experiences in first hand, see what ISDK is capable of, and take inspiration back to your app to make it feel even better. These are just a few of the many projects that the team is taking on to make developers' lives easier. We're looking into making our samples more consistent, adding new editor tooling for quick setup, adding valuable new prefabs, updating our documentation, and more. If you have ideas for what would make ISDK easier to use for you, we'd love to hear them. Thanks, and we look forward to working more closely with you soon.